Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose f is a function from a to b and g is a function from b to c. If f and g are injective, then so is g compose f. Okay, so first of all, because f is a function from a to b and g is a function from b to c, we immediately know that g compose f is a function from a to c. And second of all, what does it mean for a function to be injective? Well, if you recall, the way that works is it's essentially for any two input values to the function. If their output values are equal, then the input values are equal. So to say that f is injective, it means that for every two elements, a1 and a2 in a, if f of a1 equals f of a2, then a1 equals a2. And to say that g is injective, it means that for every two elements, b1 and b2 in b, if g of b1 equals g of b2, then b1 equals b2. Lastly, what does it mean for g compose f to be injective? Well, it means that for every two elements, a1 and a2 in a, if g compose f of a1 equals g compose f of a2, then a1 equals a2. Okay, so now let's prove the theorem. Let's suppose that we've already declared our functions f from a to b and g from b to c. And so our whole goal now is to prove if this is true, then this is true. So let's suppose this is true. And our whole goal now is to prove that g compose f is also injective, which means we want to prove this statement. So we're trying to prove a statement about every two elements in A. So give me any two elements in A. I'll call them A1 and A2. And so with these two arbitrary elements in A, our goal is to prove if this is true, then this is true. So let's suppose that this is true. So really, we want to deduce that a1 is equal to a2. So to start, if we recall from compositions of functions, we know that g compose f of a1 is the same thing as g of f of a1. And similarly, g compose f of a2 is the same thing as g of f of a2. So, because g compose f of a1 equals g compose f of a2, this means g of f of a1 equals g of f of a2. So now, we're going to use the fact that g is injective, which means we know for a fact that this second statement is true. And this second statement works for every two elements in b. So, it must work for f of a1 and f of a2. Right? We know that f of a1 and f of a2 are elements of b because f of a1 and f of a2 are functional values through the function f, which are all elements of b. So yeah, if we take this second statement and replace b1 with f of a1 and b2 with f of a2, we get that if g of f of a1 equals g of f of a2, then f of a1 equals f of a2. But we already know that g of f of a1 equals g of f of a2, so we could conclude that f of a1 equals f of a2. And now we can apply the fact that f is injective, right? We know that because f is injective, that means that this first statement is true. And this first statement works for every two elements in a. So it must work for a1 and a2. So really, we have that if f of a1 equals f of a2, then a1 equals a2. But we just showed that f of a1 equals f of a2, so we can conclude that a1 equals a2. And this actually proves that g compose f is also injective. 
The reason why is because, notice, we started with two arbitrary elements of A, A1 and A2. And we showed that if G composed f of A1 equals G composed f of A2, then A1 equals A2. Since A1 and A2 were arbitrary, that means for every two elements A1, A2, and A, if G composed f of A1 equals G composed f of A2, then A1 equals A2. Which means we've proven precisely this statement. So really, we have that G composed f is injective. And so this completes the proof. And yeah, that's pretty much the idea of how you could prove this theorem. Yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.